Hello, dear viewer. I think it is time to answer one of the most important questions in the history of gaming, and that is... How the hell do I play a commoner in Skyrim? I mean, think of it. The game constantly pushes you towards heroic deeds and sheer power. An average Skyrim character saves the entire world twice a year and is capable of slaying several dragons before breakfast just to craft the most powerful sword during his lunch break. On the other hand, Skyrim is this vivid land full of characters, love triangles, cultural tensions and hard work, filling the everyday life of the game's NPCs. It also gives the player some ability to engage in more mundane activities like cooking, playing tag and building a house in the woods. Well, at least for me, it creates an ongoing tragic conflict. I would like to spend some more time upgrading my house, but there is so many more urgent stuff like saving Serana from her parents or killing yet another crazed necromancer. So I just have to go adventuring, but then my children are sitting there in my Falkrit mansion with just Lydia as their company, and that cannot be good for them. So today I will try to show you how to prepare a playthrough that would implement the elements of everyday life in a way that would be interesting enough for you to stay invested in a more mundane character, keep you engaged in different non-adventuring activities while not completely changing Skyrim into Sims Fantasy Edition. This cannot be achieved just through character building, so before we go to the build part of the video we should go over all the mods I tested for you to see how they work together and how they impact the overall experience. Then we will talk about the house rules, some self-imposed limitation that I used in my recent commoner playthrough. I believe it is vital that you decide on some such limitations for a commoner playthrough through because, as I said, the game will always push you towards heroism and power, and even with mods and overhauls, it seems to be only the matter of time and patience for the player to become a demigod. So, let's start with the mods, of which the first to talk about should be the realism mods. Of course, you can just use the survival mode for special edition if you so choose. Some players do complain about it and how it basically forces you to use restoration spells in order to make the experience smoother. While I don't completely agree with most of the complaints, I am playing most of my Skyrim on Legendary Edition again these days and there are several mods on Nexus for both Legendary and Special Editions that can achieve a lot of realism and survival. So first and foremost, one of my favorite mods ever made, Frostfall will introduce, as you probably know, the weather system with the cold and exposure rates fully customizable through the MCM, where you can set not only how fast you will get colder in harsh weathers, but also what would happen to you in case of reaching the maximum exposure. This mod alone increases the feel of realism and forces you to think about your character more like you would about an actual person. Am I ready for the weather? Do I have enough firewood to survive the cold night? That and the fact that it also adds survival related skills, yes, adds and not changes anything in the vanilla skill trees, really makes the mod feel complete and like it should be there from day one. Then we are going to need a mod for primary needs, such as realistic needs and diseases, or I need. I personally prefer the latter with the Dangerous Diseases add-on, as it seems to include more options for managing the needs not only of your character, but also of your followers and horses, and also has a more interesting customization in my opinion. 
So, now we can die of starvation, thirst, disease and cold, but what of combat? Even as a farmer, you will have to fend off an occasional wolf or a bear, or travel to a nearby settlement to resupply. Many of you probably already use the Wildcat combat overhaul. For the purpose of this realistic experience, the most important feature in this one would probably be the injuries, which you can receive or inflict on your foes. It can be very beneficial to you, but also put you in some severe trouble very swiftly. I have one small qualm about the timed block feature, because it is so easy to master and once it is mastered, you can run around with no armor or armor spells or any unarmored perk from any mod and still kill a lot of enemies in a row, which actually makes it feel more like you are a superhero, not less so. Fortunately, this feature can be turned off. Uh, the other thing in Vanilla Skyrim that pushes you towards epicness <laughs> all the time is the game's economy, which makes it so around level 30 you can amass an incredible wealth and afford every magic item you could possibly need. The simplest answer to this problem is uh, the scarcity mod, which drastically decreases the chance of enchanted items to appear in random loot. A lot of mods overhaul the vanilla economy, however from what I tested it seems the easiest and the most elegant solution here just to use a mod called Trade and Barter and customize it to your liking via the MCM menu. You can change the buying and selling prices, make merchant gold fluctuate, so that sometimes they will have more barter gold than usual, but mostly they will get less than usual. You can also make the prices particularly elevated in some places like the main cities and so on. Combined with scarcity, it actually slows down the getting rich process exponentially without making it completely impossible and annoying to try affording staying at an inn or using a transportation service. All these changes are kind of pointless if you don't have anything to do that wouldn't feel heroic and epic. That is a problem, especially with how Skyrim tries to throw all the faction quests in your face all the time, or at least whenever it gets the chance. To solve uh, this conundrum, I would suggest you use two magnificent mods. First, Missives, which adds randomly generated radiant quests to all nine hold capitals, which you can pick up on a notice board. And the second is a severely underappreciated mod called Jobs of Skyrim. Jobs of Skyrim, as the name suggests, adds multiple jobs to do around Skyrim, some of them pretty mundane, like hunting and brewing potions for a local alchemist, other more risky and heroic, like repriced bounty quests and even dragon slaying ones. You can even become a town guard in this mod and see what happens if you take an arrow to the knee then. This means you can go for an entire playthrough full of things to do and places to explore, get rewarded for all your hard work and stay outside of the major quest lines if you so choose. However, as an average citizen of Skyrim, you could still use some more activities to perform around your household, uh, just to get more immersed in it. And I believe there is no better mod for this than the woodcutter. Contrary to the name, the mod allows far more than just cutting down trees. You can build shacks and houses with it, albeit it is a very time-consuming activity, but you can also use it just to refurnish your place, add some beds and containers, and maybe some crafting stations, some rugs and all that. You could use it to create a weaponized version of a hoe, but it is 
fair to say, even a farmer in Skyrim would keep a good mace or an axe by their side in case of any danger. If you would like your farmer to climb up the social ladder, you can also use, for example, the Tundra Defense mod, as it will let you build an entire village around your farm if you decide to put some money and time in it. Another valuable addition would be the Immersive Speechcraft mod, which is currently available only on the Legendary Edition Nexus, but it can be safely used in Special Edition. You would need to install it manually by placing the files in your data folder and then activate it before starting a new game. Just in case, I will leave a link to a guide about using older Legendary Edition mods in Special Edition. To put it briefly, this mod greatly enhances the dialogue system, allowing for many forms of interaction with any NPC, including NPCs added by mods. You can, for example, barter with anyone, offer gifts, ask for a handout, ask for help in combat, and mug somebody. Great for role-playing a wandering merchant, a bandit, a pilgrim, Pretty much anyone, really. Of course, we should also use the Live Another Life mod to start our playthrough in a context of everyday life. One of many options there is starting as an owner of a farm near Rorikstead, where you will have a lot of fertile soil plots to plant your potatoes, and you will get a little profit out of your farm each week. And finally, it may be a good idea to take care of the aesthetics, and there is one obvious mod to use for that, and it is called Common Clothes. This mod adds 40, 40 something, I believe, variants of basic clothes to the game, which you can find in the world or craft them yourself. Just look at some of them. Some of them are even slightly armored, some others are rugged and simple, but still uh, somewhat elegant. Some are just recolors of vanilla clothes. You should be dressed for a job you want, and in this case we want a job of a simple average citizen of this land. Okay, I'm not claiming you couldn't add anything to this mod list, but I would say most of them are the base on which every commoner and low-profile character playthrough can be built upon. You will have a lot of non-heroic deeds to do, including getting rich by profiting from another people's work, if you so choose, or just cutting every tree and making every piece of furniture yourself. That would conclude the mods section, so let's now talk very briefly about some house rules or self-imposed limitation for such a playthrough. It is uh, just a proposition and shouldn't be taken too seriously, however, if you are like me and you tend to stay with a single character for a very long time, sooner or later you will become a demigod of destruction regardless of mods. Hence, I thought we could enhance the experience with some rules that would assure we never become ninjas or sarumans, <laughs> or at least we avoid it for a bit longer. First, your coin purse will always grow thick eventually, no matter what mods you use. But as a family man and a responsible farmer, you should probably find a cash sink to throw your money in. Building up your own village in Tundra Defense could do it for a while, but after it's all built up and ready, it will give you quite a lot of money, so maybe you should share some of it with your spouse and kids. Say 40%? Just put appropriate amount in a chest somewhere in your house from time to time, or even better, offer it as a gift to your spouse through immersive speechcraft functions. Another good idea may be to avoid fast travel altogether, as uh, the realism mods seem to work best without it. Fortunately, 
Frostfall can disable the fast travel for you to help you fight off the temptations. And finally, I think it's best to avoid unlocking any perk that requires 70 points or more in any given skill. This in vanilla system means you will never get the shield charge and shadow warrior for example, so the path of a ninja would be closed to you. It also excludes extra effect enchanting perk, which is the crux of most of the OP builds I've seen, Atronach perk in alteration and many other perks frequently used to achieve overpowered demigod-like results. It would also limit your magical prowess somewhat, even though there are ways to become a formidable sorcerer with just the novice and apprentice level spells. In the description I will leave a link to one of my builds where I tried to do just that. Okay, having all that out of the way, it is finally the time, yes, it is time to talk about some builds for a commoner of Skyrim. Yes. One of them is my second ever character and the other is just a very versatile stealth warrior. Generally speaking, with the limitations involved in this whole undertaking, it would be a sound gameplay choice to go for versatility instead of specialization in your character building choices. Let's start with this gorgeous girl, a young red guard, traveler and alchemist who visits Skyrim to study its unique ingredients and flora, falls in love and marries Ballymond of Riften, moves in with him and starts to perceive this land as her homeland. The marriage with Balamond is a good roleplay excuse to engage in a bit of smithing to temper her one dagger, as it will be pretty much her only way to deal damage and apply poisons. She prefers to stay out of combat when it is at all possible, but if forced to she can defend herself quite skillfully or hide almost in plain sight thanks to her high sneak skill. So her main skills will be alchemy of course, sneak, one-handed, smithing and block. Alchemy will be used for both beneficial potions and harmful poisons and she probably shouldn't leave her house without a good supply of both of them as she will rely on them for both defense and offense. You only need very few perks in one handed mainly to improve the damage and smithing is needed only to craft and temper a dagger of your choosing. Luckily you will eventually be able to craft very potent smithing potions, so your damage output will be worthy of at least the expert difficulty level if not master. She isn't really that much into armor so avoiding combat altogether will often be the best choice. However, as mentioned, with the Wildcat's timed block, deflecting damage with just your dagger will be enough against bandits and similar common enemies. Creates a bit of a high risk combat style, but is somewhat reliable enough to neglect any armor skill. Also, it is worth mentioning how stamina effective it is to bash with a dagger, which combined with her racial power means you will have a very low chances of running out of stamina. Sneak and stealth is her way to avoid dangerous situations and deal with them if necessary. Even with the rule of avoiding some high level perks, she can still take backstab and assassin's blade perks, which I agree pushes her a bit towards a ninja character, but then in this dangerous land everybody should know how to kill things. Because her stamina will be sufficient and can easily be increased by potions and food, you can safely go for health only attribute policy, which in time will help you offset the low armor rating issue. You may also opt for the blessing of Kinareth, because in her case even the 25 additional points in stamina will make a difference. 
You could of course protect her a bit better with the Lord Stone. Her main goals in life include perfecting her craft and picking up a sample of every ingredient there is in Skyrim. However, as she will live in Riften, she may eventually get tempted to play with the criminal underworld of this rotten city, as her skill set will naturally push her in that direction. Overall, it may not be character interesting enough to keep a very long playthrough, but I spent about 60 hours with her and it was before all the mods I mentioned in this video were released. <laughs> I can definitely tell it was fun even then. Another build that stays within the realm of everyday characters but is a bit more geared towards the life of adventure is the Town Guard, which is simply a lightly armored warrior with some archery and stealth skills. It is a cost-effective build, switching seamlessly between stealth kills and direct combat, which requires little to no enchanted items to be quite playable. I would refer you to my Mage Hunter build, which is a good example of making up in versatility for what you lack in sheer power, which is what you want to achieve with a Town Guard. It is worth mentioning that jobs of Skyrim mod will give you a small radiant quest for a town guard which you can do repeatedly for some cash. You will be tasked by your captain to deal with some troublemakers in local tavern, which is essentially a brawl event. So maybe getting your hands on the gloves of the pugilist would be a good idea. Within this mod, you can also work for a tax collector in each hold and help in, well, collecting taxes from citizens, which seems to be a suitable task for a town guard as well. Main skills for a town guard should be one-handed block, archery, sneak and light armor. You can add a bit of smithing on top of that on higher difficulty levels. Or oh, maybe I should say you have to add a bit of smithing on higher difficulty levels. With the high block and armor skills you should be quite resilient while retaining mobility and agility and high sneak with the deadly aim perk will let you start most combat encounters on your terms by disposing of the most dangerous enemies before they can even see you. Fun thing for this character to remember is that a simple longbow, while not offering much in terms of base damage, has one of the best weapon speed in the game. This means combat archery can be pulled off with this humble weapon, especially with the power shot perk, with which you can stagger your foes with every other shot. That and block bashing can give you quite substantial crowd control without using any powerful and or expensive spells or items. Depending on which hold you decide to settle in and protect as a town guard, you may even feel compelled to engage in some pretty heroic quests, like the one concerning necromancy in solitude. And you can get a rather useful shield as a reward for that quest, as well as a quality estate, so solitude is probably one of the best choices. Riften can be quite fun too, especially if you get a mod allowing you to arrest or kill off the Thieves Guild, <laughs> unless of course you would like to roleplay as a corrupted town guard who actually joins them. And that I think would be it for this video, where more or less I did a fair share of testing for this to make sure all the mods mentioned will work together well and create some fresh experience for you. You should probably make a bashed patch once your mod list is settled. I tested both builds and checked if the proposed house rules aren't too annoying to maintain. Of course, in the end it all boils down to personal preferences and tastes, but I think the crux of the experience has been figured out. If anyone watching is in the mood for a similar playthrough, it would be nice to hear from you, especially if you have some insights on how to improve this experience further in terms of mods and builds. The commoner playthrough with all the mods mentioned should keep you busy with some mundane activities while still providing some unique sense of pride and accomplishment. 
and it also still lets you to go down the heroic path if you feel like it, so <laughs> it would be a bit of a Bilbo Buggins experience, it seems. I'm going on an adventure! I'd like to say thank you to Curse Never Dying from the Skyforge who provided some insights and ideas for the mod list as well as to the entire Skyforge in general for the inspiration and fruitful discussion. Well okay, I think I am done here finally. If you are still watching at this point your heart is probably made out of pure gold so thank you for that and since you are already such a nice person subscribe, like and comment and uh, all of that. <laughs> Most of the time I would ask for subs and uh, likes in writing at the end of each build but this thing was so exhausting to make I feel more entitled for some appreciation now. <laughs> These blasted millennials always feel so entitled. Anywho, <laughs> hope you will have fun with your Skyrim. Stay tuned, stay awesome, stay Skyrim, and then and, and, uh, I have no idea how to finish this video, so we will see each other again, I hope. Bye bye. <laughs>